Hey guys, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to talk about our second connection type, which is unattended robot. Just to remind you, in remote debugging, here if you go to configure remote debugging, you have the option remote machine and the other one is unattended robot. So in this one, we are going to talk about the unattended robot connection type and make note of very important points that is important for our exam preparation. So let's get started. Now here in this table, this is available in setup remote debugging. And if you scroll down, you find this section. In this one, let's read each of this point carefully and make note of the keywords. The very first point, all prerequisites are met. So here in the previous one, we have seen any one of them, but here all the conditions should be met. Okay. All conditions should be met. So what is the first condition? Let's see that. The very first condition is studio and the target robot are connected to same orchestrator tenant. So this is the Q1 connected to same orchestrator tenant. What are those things should be connected? your studio and remote and the unattended robot. Okay. So both of them should be connected to the same orchestrated tenant. Now there will be questions connected to uh, any tenant connected to same tenant. So you should remember this word is important. Same orchestrator tenant. Clear. Now let's move on to our second point. Studio the target robot and orchestrator are running version 2021.10 or later. Now look at this for the robot. They are saying the minimum version should be this. Okay. This is the key point for the robot. Robot means your unattended robot should be having the version 2021.10.6. This is the minimum. Anything higher works for it. And what is the version for the studio studio version starting with 2021 10.16 It's same both robot and studio should have the same version robot and studio. This is second important point. First one connected to the same orchestrated tenant. Second one, the studio version should be minimum 2021 10.6 or higher. Clear. Okay. Third point. What is the third point? The user signed into studio has permission to start job. Now it is talking about user who will be running the debug, right? What are the permissions required? The very first permission it, they are talking about, you should have permission to start job. What is the permission? You should have permission to start job. And then other permission to create and delete storage buckets. And storage files. So create, delete, so simply make few words, create, delete, storage, buckets and files. Simple. These are the minimum permissions required. First permission is 3.1. The user should have permission to start jobs. And the second permission is create, delete, storage, buckets and files. Clear? Okay, let's focus on our fourth point. The unattended robot is configured and the machine has one of the following runtime licenses. This is a very important point. Okay, what kind of license your unattended robot should have for a remote debugging? If this question asked, you are given multiple options of different license types. You should only select <coughs> unattended or non-production. What is that? License, what should be the license type? The license type should be either unattended or non production, no testing license and all that. Okay, unattended or non production. Clear now. Let's look at our fifth point. Fifth point for debugging foreground processes. This could be also a question for debugging foreground processes. What should be enabled? The option run foreground automation is enabled for the robot in orchestrators. So this is an important point for foreground processes. 
what should be enabled you have to enable the option run foreground option is enabled okay so this is the point so these are the important points now let's recap what are the things we have learned when you are going for unattended robot the very first condition that you need is connected to the same orchestrated tenant both studio and the unattended robot second point for the robot and studio they should be running on the minimum version 2021.10.6 or higher user permission the user the studio user should have permission to start jobs create delete storage buckets and files when it comes to licenses you should have unattended licenses or non production license the robot should contain unattended or non production license fifth point foreground processes to to run any foreground process what you have to do the option run foreground automation is enabled now let me show you this run foreground automation in this one okay run foreground automation for your robot for your unattended robot this should be checked run foreground automation okay should be enabled so these are the point i am going to pass all this points in the description of the video please copy it that this might help you it is easy to read this points and remember right after you have gone through the documentation available from the academy all right now look at in studio in studio what you have to do in studio is pretty simple you go here you selected the unattended robot and start selecting the users the machine and host name and show live stream and click on save that that is all you have to do in studio once you have done the made the connection then you can debug so the remote debugging will start this video i have shown a demonstration of this in my previous video hope you have seen that so this is important now i am also going to cover one more important point okay one more important point um, perform remote execution uh, so to perform remote execution this button should be clicked so when you click on this button see it is becoming white if you click once again it should be gray in color that means remote debugging is enabled important point as long as button is highlighted in gray all run and debug operations debug file and all that uh, you know on the remote robot it happens okay as long as the button is not highlighted in gray all run and debug operations are performed in the local robot pretty simple okay now this is a important point this two are very important point let me cover this depending on the type of connection used for remote debugging what are the two different type of connection one is remote machine the other one is attend unattended robot connection the remote robot gets the activity packages required to execute project as follows this point i have already covered in my previous video but again let me highlight when you are going for the remote machine connection that means when i am going for the first option remote machine if i go for the remote machine connection that time what happens your local studio is going to send the list of project dependencies and activity feeds that means the entire packages from your local machine it is going to be sent to the remote robot which so feeds means remember feeds means the packet source i mean every package will have some mb right some size will be there so that entire it will send the list of project dependencies and also the activity feed the package source will be sent to the remote robot to a temporary folder to be sent it will be cleared later on which uses the feeds provided by studio to download the required packages okay when you go for the second option unattended robot that time what happens does the local studio sends the feeds or the package feeds is sent to the remote robot no this is the difference okay in the first one it sends the list of project dependencies the names of them and their source also it sends it sends that folder in unattended robot studio sends only the list of project dependencies meaning what it only sends the name okay i am using mail activities i am using excel activities only this two activity package okay only send the name after it sends the name what happens how that remote the unattended robot gets that activity package there are two sources for it one is the orchestrator feed it gets from the orchestrator because it is connected right it is an unattended robot which is connected so it directly gets those those uh, packages directly from the orchestrator 
or else the activity feeds configured on the remote robot. So the remote robot also you have installed studio in that. If you have installed studio, it will also check the local one. If it is available, start using it there. So any of these two options it will use, but it doesn't send the local feeds from the developer's laptop to the remote machine. So this is also a very important point. Okay. Now let me cover this known limitations. When you use a remote machine connection, if you pause debugging for an extended period of time, a connection closed error might occur in studio. Okay. So if you are pausing the debugging process, then the connection will get closed. Even though on the remote machine, the connection still appears to be active. To avoid this issue, you can increase the TCP idle time out in your cloud or on-premise load balancer. Okay. Now this is something uh, you may or may not be able to do it if you don't have access but again remember connection closed error might occur during the remote debugging if you keep it in pause state remote debugging long running workflows is only supported for unattended robot connections remote debugging long running workflows is only supported for unattended robot if you have a huge workflow you should only go with the unattended robot connection you should not go with the first option you should not use the first option remote machine rather you should go with the unattended if it is a long workflow when you use an unattended robot connection the second option selecting the picture in picture option does not start execution in a separate so picture in picture is something if you are going for the second option it will not work the show live stream option works only if the robot service on the unattended robot is deployed in service mode now you're installing the unattended robot has to be done in the service mode let's say you have not done it in the service mode the show live stream option won't work so it's saying the show live stream option works only if the robot service on the unattended robot is deployed in service mode okay last point the show live stream option is only supported for automation cloud orchestrator and automation suite orchestrator not for on-premise ones this is also another option the show live stream i've shown you the uh, during the demo of unattended robot connection type i've shown this demo okay these are a couple of important points just go through them and uh, you know that would help in case any kind of questions are framed around this you know what should be the right answer so thank you guys for watching let's move on to some of the questions right now